Today, we're going to be working on a PCB board for a $10 million Cessna Citation 560 aircraft. This is a de-ice motherboard. It's responsible for removing or preventing ice buildup on the tail and wings. And we fixed another board for that same company, also a Cessna motherboard. Right off the bat, we see a burn mark here. Resistor and the chip. With my naked eye, I was not able to tell if there's anything else wrong with the board. I could not see anything else wrong, but we're going to inspect the board under the microscope. The board looks wet, right? But it's not. So I see a faulty resistor or a burned resistor and a chip. And that's first impression. So in case you're wondering, for those in the field, the board number is 6518355-3 Now I did order a replacement chip and the resistor but before we proceed I just want to make sure that surrounding components they are measuring good one thing we will not be able to do is test the aircraft right the customer did not mail the aircraft along with the board so big boss is not going to be able to test it what can you do Right now we have two caps here. Let's flip the board. Make sure we do not have a short circuit on those caps. Meter in diode mode. And we're going to go like this. We have a 0 0.47 voltage drop reading and that's perfect. Flip the probes again. And we're going to measure here. We have 0 0.612 voltage drop reading. We're not reading a short, and that's good. We have a few diodes right next to the resistor. Let's measure them in diode mode. We do not want to read a short. Measure from here to here, 0 0.612. And we're going to measure from here to here. We have 0 0.54, and that's perfect. Surrounding components look good. Nothing obvious. I mean, those diodes are almost Hiroshima proof. The chips look good, no burn marks and nothing obvious. Right, so we're going to focus at the burned components. One minor issue, I did order the chip and the resistor and we got both of them. We got the right chip and we got the wrong resistor. What is the value of the resistor? That's a very good question. How can I figure out the value of the resistor? I do have the model number that you can see here, but the model number alone is not enough because we need to know the value of the resistor. If you search online, you can find the same model, but you need the value of the resistor, so the ending of this number should be down on the bottom. And I tried. We cannot see what's down on the bottom. So if I do not know the value of the resistor, we do not have schematics or board view diagrams. How can we replace it? What should the value be? You have to use your head. You have to use that piece of fat inside your skull. What I did is I looked up the same board and I found only one person who has that board on eBay and he's selling the board for $12,000. It's a two layer board with few components, but maybe you cannot buy that board anymore. $10 million aircraft, 
$12,000 for a board, what's $12,000 between friends, right? I was able to find one person on eBay selling that board, $12,000, and I zoomed into the image. I wanted to read the numbers on that resistor, and it's a 20 ohm resistor. You can read down on the bottom, 20. K20R0F. And maybe we should tip that person, maybe give him $1,000 tips, because without him, I would not have figured out the value of that resistor. Right? We'll just give him $1,000, pocket change. I mean, we're talking about a $10 million aircraft here, right? Right? I meant 1,000 pesos and not dollars. What's 1,000 pesos? Now, I ordered both the chip and the resistor, and I got both of them. But to my surprise, the resistor I got is not 20 ohms. I got the wrong resistor. It's reading 261 ohms. Look at this, 261-0F, that's 261 ohm resistor. That will not work. We're going to have to order another one and wait a couple of days before we get it. What can you do? So what we're going to do in this video, we're going to remove the resistor, we're going to clean up, we're going to replace the chip. And then once we get the resistor, we can replace it, invoice, and send this back to the customer. Now the chip is a linear voltage regulator, MC78M05BTG, that's the model number. We're going to flip the board, and what we're going to do is apply a low melt solder right here at the three pins, and we need to apply low melt solder on front of the board. I do not want to expose the board to a lot of heat, I can easily apply hot air, point hot air 450 degrees Celsius on the board until solder liquefies and then remove that part, but I do not want to expose the board to a lot of heat. What we're going to do is use low melt solder and people up to this day, they ask me what is low melt solder? I talk about it in every video and I use it in every video. I use our flux in every video. I use our tools in every video and I mention it. I mentioned our tools, I mentioned low melt solder, I mentioned the flux. And people still ask, what is low melt solder? Low melt solder melts at a very low temperature. When mixed with unleaded solder that's already on the board, the mixture is going to yield a lower melting point. So we can apply a tiny bit of hot air or our soldering iron, and we should be able to easily remove that component. So we do not expose the board to a lot of heat. A tiny bit of low melt goes a long way. We only use a tiny bit. We soak the joint with low melt solder and you will see in this video. If you are in the same type of business or you are doing this as a hobby, you can purchase all your tools off our site. Our NF.flux, the flux that we are currently using, which I already went over in a couple of videos, is one of the best fluxes in the market. I keep mentioning this in every video. Low melt solder you can purchase off our site. Soldering station, hot air station, and I think Hot Air Station is currently out of stock. Log in to northwishfix.com. Click on Shop. Choose your items, Add to Cart, Checkout, Pay, and we almost always ship out same day. All items are in stock unless the item is not in stock. Simple. Let's start with the back. So we have our fume extractor on. So now we are mixing low melt solder with unleaded. Okay, and look at this, the pins are already moving. And that's the magic of low melt solder. Now we're not going to be able to push the pin downwards because we still have to apply low melt solder here.
and now we should be able to remove that component. The pins are stuck because they are bent. They're already liquefied, but because they are bent, we need to remove upwards like this. And the component is out. Let's remove the resistor and then we can clean up. And the resistor is the one in the middle. You have to work on this board like you're handling a baby. You only have one chance. You mess up the board, you mess up the rings. It's on you. Now we can push that resistor down. And look at how gentle Lomel solder is. Just tap that resistor on the head nicely. Good boy. And we're going to pull from the bottom. See, low melt stays liquefied for a few seconds. It doesn't harden quick. So you want page one? Yeah. Do you need page two? No. Our mailman just wanted me to print something for him. Sometimes he comes in. Maybe our warehouse is closed. Sometimes I'm inside recording, but I close the front door. So he calls me. Where are you? And if I'm not at the store, he tells me I can come over to you. We live in the same town. Who does that? One time he met me next to my house. He brought the packages all the way next to my house. He thought maybe I needed those packages. All right, so let's desolder the hole. And you see how magical the braid wick is? It doesn't take no for an answer. All right, and now all is left to do is to solder that chip. Just removing any leftovers of low melt. You do not solder with low melt. It's brittle. It melts at a low temperature. You solder with leaded or unleaded solder. Not with low melt. You only use low melt solder when you want to desolder, when you want to lower the melting temperature of the solder joint. So now we have a clean pad here. And the chip came from Mauser and not some person selling the chips from his basement. So we know the chip is legit. A lot of times you buy chips from AliExpress from China and they end up being fake chips. They do nothing. And the chip came in a diamond box. We have to break the seal. Ready? Put on your sunglasses because it's going to be bright. Right there. Okay?
Right, so let's solder the legs and then we can come back to the front. Now the legs are too long, we can always cut them. And just look at the quality of this microscope, the Northridge Fix microscope. If you do not already have one, you need one. Not just for micro soldering, but for anything. My kids, they come in here and they start putting their fingers under the microscope. They bring a bug, they capture a bug and they want to see it under the microscope. They have one of those bug catchers, like you trap it inside that magnifier box. But with the magnifier, you can only see so much. So they put it under the microscope and they can see everything. Let me put the anti glare light on. And look at this. Look at those joints. And tell me the joints are not better than factory. I'm going to put my finger on top so it doesn't snap in my eye. We don't want to cut too short. Right. Now all is left to do is to clean the board and wait for that resistor, the 20 ohm resistor, solder it back on. Same way that we soldered the chip. We put the two leads inside the holes and we solder from the back. All right, and we are done. We replaced the chip right here, and now we're gonna wait until we get the resistor and we're gonna put it right next to the chip. So, I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think of it down in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll do something else in the next video. Beautiful, beautiful.